Hello everyone and welcome to the San Jose State University School of Information Career Webcast. This is Jill Cleese, your iSchool Career Center Liaison. I will be your moderator tonight, so thank you very much for joining me. We have the great pleasure to have Sally Gore with us tonight, who is a Research Evaluation Analyst for the University of Massachusetts Center for Clinical and Translational Science. Whew, that is quite a title. Sally is a skills expert who will share with you how to inventory your own skills and apply them to LIS jobs. Tonight's session is one hour and it is being recorded. You can find recordings to past career webcasts on the SJSU School of Information's YouTube channel under Career Development Webcasts. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So I'm going to hand it off to you, Sally, so take it away. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, everyone. Um, I trust everyone can hear me okay. And if not, you can type something in that box and I'll see it and uh, we'll try to correct it. Thanks for the invitation and thanks for um, being here this evening and we'll have a little chat for a bit and some time for Q&A and maybe a bit of a discussion. Um, so what I want to talk about tonight is, um, as, as Joe was saying, how to kind of inventory your skills and what we know in terms of working with information and um, and how those skills translate to different areas um, within the library and outside of the library. I've had a career now for uh, a dozen years or so, and the majority of it was working within an academic health sciences library, and then the last two years I'm still at, the, at an academic medical center, uh, educational center, but I don't work in the library anymore. So I'll talk a little bit about how that all um, came together. But what I want you to think about as we're as we're talking tonight, and depending upon where you are in your uh, educational career or the blending of your already working and getting education, or, or people come from different aspects into the librarianship. I know, um, but what do you? Uh, what I want you to think about as we start is what's your dream for libraries? You know, there are libraries run from the these are just three quick pictures that I put that I pulled up, but um, you know, from the very traditional and beautiful things like the U.S. Library of Congress. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I was down at um, Yale uh, for the for a conference, and I went into the library there where they filmed that great scene with the from one of those Raiders of the Lost Ark episodes where the guy comes in on the motorcycle and everything and I mean they're just so traditional and beautiful and I don't know about you but for me um, there's something very um, endearing and and uh, pleasant about that image and quite honestly if I could have a job working in a very beautiful building like that all day. I wouldn't turn it down because <laughs> so, we love libraries like that and I, and I love books and things. But that's not always the world that we live in. And so um, there are really modern centers like the uh, Hunt Library at NC State, which is fairly new and just this amazing information sort of center that's come up. And then the picture on the bottom right hand corner is the our, where I work at our uh, latest building the our research center, which doesn't actually house a library, but those are the people that work in that research center are by and large a lot of the people that I work with. And they don't need a physical library so much. So when you think about from the traditional to the very new modern information centers to places that just do research and don't have libraries, what is it when you're thinking about libraries and your dream for what they are or what they could be or what um, you wish they uh, were or anything like that? And similarly, as you're thinking of that, what is your dream for librarians? And this is a wonderful picture of a librarian uh, back whenever, <laughs> I'm guessing 50s or 60s, from I believe it's either a Library of Congress or National Library of Medicine, one or the other. But, um, you know, doing, what kind of jobs do you think that librarians do? What kind of job are you looking to do uh, as you enter into this profession? Or if you're in the profession now and you might be thinking of uh, transferring your skills to something else, what is it that you like to do? What is it that drew you to the profession in the first place? Um, I, I uh, personally 
would have loved to have been a news librarian and just kind of search through news stories and all that, all that kind of stuff and, and uh, help do research that way. That, that those jobs don't exist so much anymore, so I, I do something else. But what's your dream for librarians and how we work within the setting that we're in? And then thirdly, the thing I want to touch on tonight is how do you plan to get there? Because you don't get to your dreams unless you have some sort of plan. Generally, stuff doesn't fall in our laps. <laughs> uh, every now and then, maybe, uh, we're lucky and we get like a fortune cookie kind of, ooh, yay, that, that landed for us. But most of the time we have to have a blending of good fortune and hard work and they come together and the uh, stars align or whatever and you um, you build upon the networks that you've made or the skills that you put together and um, and you're able to build something out of that when you're paying attention. But you kind of need to have a plan and something in your back pocket to help you get uh, from point A to point B uh, to do that professionally. And so these are the things I want to talk about tonight um, as we go on. So I'm going to tell you a story. So this is um, for those of you who read my blog, you know that I, I draw notes, I draw sketch notes of um, meetings that I go to and, and things. One, because I like to doodle, and two, uh, because I I started sketchnoting several years ago when I read a few books about the whole um, idea of drawing pictures and tapping into both sides of your brain as opposed to one or the other, and how uh, visual communication really helps us retain memory better than, say, typing in your notebooks or, or on your laptops or whatever, but really just kind of sitting down and playing out the salient points of a talk and and writing them in a way that makes sense to you. Um, there's a lot of research on that. And if you're interested in it, you can always uh, either read my blog or send me an email. I'm happy to share resources because it really does, um, it's, it's been a lot to me over the last few years. But so you can see, this is from when I was still working in the library, September of uh, 2014, and we were having our one of our annual all staff retreats. and, and um, for those of you who are working in the library now or worked in any area where you have to go through that dreaded thing of strategic planning, <laughs> um, maybe you like it. Some people do like it. I I don't. I, I just don't my thing. But we were at that point in the library where I was working and it was time to do another strategic plan. And so we were looking ahead and um, a library director who was incredibly innovative and we did a lot of really interesting things in our library and I had a good um, a good run there in terms of work. Um, we, the talk though, the, the planning stage of it all just was really kind of weighing on me in terms of uh, we never had enough money to do anything, we never had enough staff to do all that we wanted to do. Um, we weren't going to ever get raises. We weren't going to get increases in benefits. All this kind of thing that, you know, after a while, these kind of build up. And and I've been there for ten years. And I, while I really liked my colleagues and I liked where I was, and we just bought a house in town, so I wasn't moving anywhere. Um, <laughs> I was thinking, well, what else? Um, you know, this isn't really what I I want to do. This isn't the environment that I want to be stuck in for a while. And um, and so I just started to think, what can I, um, what do I have? You know, what is the skill set that I have that I can maybe translate into something else, uh, be it another library locally or something else here at the medical school where I was working. And so that was really the challenge for me. I was not unhappy where I was working, but I was kind of, eh, I don't know. And um, if you've worked in, in, at least in my, pre in, in my context of, of um, health sciences libraries for a while, uh, you know, this is not uncommon. My library was not um, uncommon from any other uh, academic health sciences library or hospital library or anything. Everybody was, everybody's facing these issues all the time. And I um, I was just kind of a little bit tired of journals always going up and not enough budget and blah, blah, blah. So um, what was I going to do with this? And so I started to think, well, what can I do? What can I do? And um, this is me, long, long time ago. And <laughs> um, when I was growing up, we uh, were a camping family. 
we can't, this is, I think it's probably it's my, I, I, you know, I, I think it's my backyard, but it doesn't really look like the backyard that I grew up in, but it could be. Anyway, we, we were a um, big camping family. We camped um, for our summer vacations. We camped probably one weekend every month. The family went, my brother and I, and my mom and dad, and um, we just, it's just what we did, and we enjoyed it, and we enjoyed getting out and doing things. Later on in life, I realized this because my parents are both public school teachers, and it's probably the only thing they could ever afford for us to do, but we, we, um, it, we had a lot of fun with it. And then as I got older, um, my dad was really into backpacking, and he would alternate uh, spring break weeks between my brother and I, my, I'm an older brother, and he would take us each for a week. And so when I was thinking about um, my own strategic plan, and I thought about, um, I, I thought about backpacking with my dad, and to be honest, I, I came up with this, as you can see, a couple of years ago. And the, the more interesting, the not interesting thing, the, the more touching thing, my dad passed away just this past um, spring after a very long illness. And so it means a little bit more to me now, even, even then, that uh, we had these experiences together. And so we would go on these backpacking trips, and my mom would drop us off at some trailhead and we, and on a, you know, a Sunday, and then she picked us up the following Saturday, so however many miles down the road. And these are the rules, at least I started doing this when I was maybe about in the fifth grade. And so these are the rules that we that, that I have in terms of hiking with my dad that I thought were very applicable when I was thinking about my own career <laughs> in libraries. And so here's my backpacking strategic planning model that I came up with it. And rule number one is that you plan for as far ahead as you can see, but no further. So my dad and I were hiking together. Of course, I was, you know, fifth grade, however old that is, 11, 12 years old, and, and my dad was grown. <laughs> and so he would walk as far ahead of me, he had longer legs, he would walk as far ahead of me until I couldn't see his backpack anymore. And then he would wait for me to catch up which was great for him because he got a lot of breaks. Not so great for me because I just always had to keep going, but that was okay. Uh, but, and he always had either an orange backpack or a red backpack or something I could see. And so uh, I thought, you know, that's a pretty good model for life. You just plan um, for as far ahead as you can see. And, and in particular, when you're working in our field now, where information is changing so incredibly fast and our job changes so incredibly fast, um, it's really difficult to set up any sort of strategic plan that's, that's seriously going to last more than a year or two, <laughs> you know, because everything, everything is just shifting beneath you. And so I thought it was a, it's a nice metaphor and a good lesson to learn about um, or to take with you in terms of, so you need a plan, and you need to plan ahead enough that you can see, but not necessarily too far ahead because you have no idea really what's going to be around around that path or around the bend in the turn. And the other thing is to keep your eyes on a reliable object. So for me, and my metaphor, of course, it was my dad's backpack and my dad himself. Um, it's, you know, it, in terms of our profession, um, the reliable object for me has always been um, peers, and a great collaborative network of people to work with, a skill set that I know that I can fall back on, um, a skill set that I continue to evolve and work with so that um, it expands as, as what I need to do. But all these things that are, that are very reliable. And in all honesty, people, I think, and particularly in librarianship, I think that people are, and your network of peers and professional um, mentors or whatever are very much the most reliable thing that you can that you can count on in looking ahead. The third thing, of course, is to look down at the ground every now and then so that you don't trip and fall. Of course, if you're on a trail, if you're on a um, vocational path, you know you, you need to be kind of grounded. You need to know uh, what's there, what the environment is really like, um, and not to be just kind of wandering around wherever so that you can 
uh, easily trip and fall and get out of your way. And at the same time, number four, to, to look up every now and then <laughs> so that you um, know actually where you're going. And you know, go straying off the trail or down some sort of pathway. Uh, within my own profession, I know a number, uh, a few years back that when bioinformatics was just, just coming on board and there was a lot of talk within medical libraries that bioinformatics might be a place where librarians, biomedical librarians could get a foothold and, and um, it didn't really turn out to be that way just because it was biology and we were all medical librarians and, and informatics, which we seem to think, oh, information, that's us. It's, it's a very complicated and detailed world um, and has grown into a huge field and, and there's not really a place for librarians there. So um, it's really kind of good to, to just just yourself. So I think there's a I, three and four probably came to me from um, if you also if you read my blog, you know I, I kind of do music and play music and all that sort of, sort of stuff. And there's a, a very good song by the singer songwriter Ani DeFranco who talks about if you look down, you trip over your feet or look up or something. I'm sure that that's where I came up with that number three and four from that. But anyway, so uh, based on that plan. You know, you can't, it's really difficult to have any sort of plan without goals and objectives. Um, I learned that. Anybody who's learned that, it's in business anywhere. And so um, my three goals and objectives that go along with my strategic, strategic plan is to know yourself, uh, know your environment, and know how to bring these two things together. And if you can learn to do that, regardless of what you're working in, regardless of what you're doing, be, whether we're talking about your career or heck, pretty much anything <laughs> in life. If you know yourself and you know where you are and you find a way to, um, to blend those, those two things together, you're, you'll be in pretty great shape. And um, you can see down there in the um, corner, that's just, that's my dog, Eliza, the tricolored hound dog there. It's about be in the talent pool because you'll be pretty talented. <laughs> you'll be a, um, a worthy talent that people will look for and you'll have a, a good opportunity for, for lots of jobs and other things that you can do if you can practice these three um, goals and objectives. You'll be in the talent pool there with Eliza and whoever that friend of hers is. I'm not sure who that friend is, but some friend. And so um, basically what I'm trying to say from all this is, just, is that um, when you enter into this field, the, the biggest thing that you're trying to do nowadays is to Look for whatever your patron, whoever your patrons are, whether they're researchers or doctors or nurses or the public or uh, school kids or, you know, whatever field of librarianship you plan to go into, everybody has a specific set of needs. And you kind of need to know what those are. And you need to um, keep abreast of them. You need to update them. You need to really stay on top of this kind of stuff. And then you also need to have a very good inventory of what your own skills are. And the big, the, then of course the big challenge and the big goal of all of this is simply to fill in that gap of what you know how to do and what your pay, and what your patrons need, right? It's sort of I think as Steve Jobs always said about Apple, it's kind of knowing what your what your uh, customer needs before they even know that they need it, kind of thing. And I don't begin to even say that I'm that skilled in this, but um, it is a matter of having an idea of what might help your uh, the people that you're trying to serve do their work the best, and then putting that there. And it's a it's a little bit of work to figure out what that is, but if you keep working at it and honing that skill, um, you'll be uh, you'll be it's a great advantage for you in terms of moving ahead. So I want to talk a little bit about how you do, how I did this personally, and then hopefully it'll give you a good idea uh, that you can do it yourself wherever you are, either now in your library career, if you're looking for your first job or your or a new job or shifting over or whatever, uh, I want to talk a little bit about this. So of course, the first thing is to know yourself. And, and um, a little bit of background about me, um, I, I had a bunch of careers and they've involved, uh, some of them have involved pretty extensive bit about uh, exercises in knowing myself. Uh, and so uh, formally and informally. So it gave me a good starting point for, for all of this. And I, um, 
So I encourage you to do this. And so when I think about myself and I think about knowing myself in terms of work, and I just make a big long list. And this is this is a list right here of lots of jobs that I've had over my lifetime since up in the lifting career you stay as a babysitter and I probably started doing that when I uh, who knows, I was a preteen maybe in my neighborhood, to working in a drugstore when I was in high school, to scooping ice cream at the Grand Canyon one summer, to being a fitness instructor and exercise physiologist and they um, you can see I have a few ministerial jobs there because I, I did that career for for about fifteen years. And um, a lot of other kind of things that came along. Right. And then Yes, I, I went into the field of librarianship, which is great. And today my title is a research evaluation analyst, which is just, to me, a very specialized librarian. And um, I, whenever people say, what do you do? I say, I'm a librarian. I don't get into trying to explain what a research evaluation analyst is, because I'm not really sure. But I do know what a librarian is. And so I start from that, that place. But the point being that from every one of these jobs that I've ever had in my life, I can I could probably pick out a, a skill or two that I learned or that I gained from doing all of these jobs that I can um, apply to my work today. So you might say, what in the world does being a swim club manager have to do with being a librarian, research evaluation analyst, blah, blah. Um, well, when I was a swim club manager, I had to manage people, and I had to do schedules, and I had to plan ahead for things, and I had to make sure the snack machines were filled, which doesn't have anything to do with what I do today, but um, it's kind of about meeting people's needs. When I, you know, scooped ice cream or was a short order cook, I had to deal with the public all the time. Um, when I was a minister, I did a lot of public uh, speaking and preaching, and I did a lot of teaching in uh, Sunday school classes and stuff. When I packed packages at L.L. Bean while I was in graduate school, I learned how to punch a clock and how to um, empathize with people who might not be, you know, professionals on my level or whatever. And um, all of these things are really great experiences, and how the out of all of them, I learned skills that when I try to do my job today, I guarantee you I pull, I rely upon them for lots of different things. And so I think what happens too often in, in our um, careers nowadays, we've become very specialized, uh, which is important. It has its, its places and time, times and places, but um, we, we try to learn to be like a really great reference library. And I want to be a really great reference librarian for whatever, architecture, whatever library you're going to end up in. And, and you, need, you need to be really good at it. And you need to know a lot of basics about it. I'm a medical reference librarian. I need to know every database that's going to be important to me in finding health information for the people that come to me. I need to know how to find systematic reviews. I need to know how to, um, you know, do great search streams in PubMed and, and all those sorts of things. And that's really important. But I also know how, need to know how to talk to people. I need to know how to teach people. I need to know how to stand up in front of other people and present information. And all of those things I didn't necessarily learn in library school, right? And so, and, and I, I'm not, and you can't really count on library school to teach you all of these things. And so you kind of have to dig deep into the other um, opportunities that you've had in life, or if you haven't had them, find ways to have them so that you can pull those skills into your skill set. And then the next task in terms of knowing yourself is to know is so you've got this list and you, you have all these things that you know how to do, and that's really great. And then what I did in terms of <clears throat> excuse me, working, you know, moving when I was, when I wanted to move from the library into something else, and I didn't really know what else, but there was an opportunity for me to work in the Translational Science Center. I, I looked at all the things I knew how to do, all of them, and not just the few things I, not the few things, the many things I learned in, in 10 years in working in the library, but 
those things plus all those other things I had learned from other jobs. And I looked at this opportunity and I looked at the um, job requirements and I looked at what they were they wanted in somebody to do this job and I I simply sat down and I matched every one of those skills that I had to the needs that that this particular job was asking of me. And you can do that either on a big scale like that for a new job or when you're within your own job, uh, current position, do it for that to develop new things or to, to figure out how you can best meet um, the changing needs of the people that you're working with. Um, because I can tell you in the 10 years that I worked in the library, um, I, I probably had 10 different jobs, you know, 10 different job titles, 10 different groups of people that I was working with from consumers to scholarly communication issues to the research community to um, third year medical students and all that sort of stuff. I mean, I just, I worked with lots of different people and they all had different needs. And so you kind of have to do this inventory and have it constantly going. And when I say constantly, I don't mean it's it's an obsession that you do, of course, every day, but it's something that you just have in the, have a little notebook, have a, a mental note, whatever, whatever works best for you to kind of, these are all the things I know how to do. Even if it's like you take one uh, couple hours, one morning when you have a downtime at work and go, let me just think about all the things I know how to do. And just make a list, you know, and then you just, Go back and visit it every now and then and add new things to it as you go along. And then think about where you are or maybe where you want to be or what you want to do. And it's like a giant match game and you just kind of work from there. And so when I did this for um, to move into the new, into the not so new job now because I've been here almost a couple of years, but, um, the, you know, I could say these are all the things I know how to do. From my job, I know how to develop data dictionaries. I know how to write grant proposals. I know how to teach people. I know how to develop communities. I know how to measure research impact. I know how to mentor people. I have experience in leading people. I work well with others. I <laughs> play well with others on the playground. All that sort of thing. But I can really write this down, all of this down. And then when um, I had to work with the HR department to convince them that. Because, you know, when you think about it, people put a job description out there or, or an application out there and they say, this is, this is what we want. And information is so um, kind of what's the word, ubiquitous or whatever. It's just like, it, it just, it's so hard to get a, a handle on sometimes. But if you, if you can make the argument, if you can say, look, I do, I know how to do all of these things and they all relate to information and you have all of these needs and they all relate to information and despite the fact that I was a librarian and they were looking for an evaluator um, I was able to make that argument pretty well in that um, look I, I know how to do all these things and these are the needs that you have you need to know how to track your researchers you need to know how to track your publication you need to know how to to measure their the impact of the research of the projects that you're funding, et cetera, et cetera. And you might not call me an evaluator, but I sure do know how to do that and because of the skills that I have. And so um, that's how I was able to just kind of move into this job. And it was nice because it gave me something really new to do, um, something um, a new, a, just kind of a fresh start, a little jump start in, in interest and things, and I've been able to learn a lot of new skills that I didn't have before then. So now that my, my notebook list is even longer. So <clears throat> basically what I'm trying to say is that a librarian is, you know, one person, and, um, and we can define a librarian as like, here's, here, I'm a librarian, and it means blah, 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 blah. If you ever try to explain to your family what you do for a living as a librarian, uh, unless you uh, are a librarian that works in a public library and uh, checks out books to people, a lot of people have not a clue what a librarian does, <laughs> at least that's been my experience. But a librarian is one thing. The librarianship can mean, a, you know, a dozen, two dozen, a hundred different things um, because it all has to do with information. And information is just everywhere nowadays, be it um, in, in 
package form or print package form or needing to be organized in some way, data needing to be put it in some sort of format, all this kind of stuff. And that's, um, you know, we here in high school, I went to an high school, I went to Syracuse, it was an information school, not a library school, we kind of moved beyond that. And, um, you know, librarianship is just a, a part within information science and uh, it lends itself to an awful lot of things that we can do. And so I, I threw this slide in there. This is a poster that I did um, a few years ago for a um, symposium. And it was just kind of explaining how, and this is when I was still working within the library itself. And I had been charged with reaching out to the research community, which is something that we really hadn't done. So I did this little subway map because, again, I like to draw pictures and doodles and all that kind of a thing. And um, so, I, I grew up in the Virginia area. If anybody's from the East Coast and you know um, Northern Virginia and Washington and the metro, it was kind of a metro system. But, um, you know, so you can see that the hub of everything was the library. I called it the transfer station. But, but my job really reached out to all of these other areas, be it from the main building, actually physical locations of the main building to the research building to the um, ACC building, which is actually where I work now, to um, Michelle Milley, et cetera, et cetera, all of these little lines and all of these uh, things and relationships that I've developed. Um, and you can see I have these little station features in terms of organization and knowledge management and communication and um, disseminating research findings and doing a literature searching and systematic reviews and building collaborations and data management and all those sorts of things and, and um, just basically just a schematic of how the one bigger uh, question mark center library center which at one time everybody came to now it was the librarian's role to get out to all the other places and once you get out you develop this great network and system of ways of uh, transferring your skills and your knowledge to lots of different places and it can bring you lots and lots of different um, opportunities to do things. So <clears throat> this is a slide that actually put together for a presentation that I just did a few weeks back in, in, um, in Michigan, to the Michigan Health Sciences Library group, and I thought I would I'd just share it with you today because when I was looking at the job um, that I have now, you can see over on the right this list of these are the qualifications that they wanted for an evaluator, graduate degree, experience in the environment, blah, 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 blah. Right, <laughs> and so I went back over into in terms of um, listing and measuring my own competencies and qualifications and how I can match those um, with what I knew how to do. So of course I knew how to interact well with stakeholders. Librarians know how to do that. We have stakeholders and we do that. I knew how to uh, collaborate across groups. Team science is big in clinical presidential research, and I knew how to do that because every team the library had ever put together and everything about how to um, work with people from different backgrounds and different skill sets and all that sort of thing, um, leading teams and being collaborative and program planning and design and all that sort of stuff. So basically this was how I kind of pulled the competencies and qualifications from a particular, a very specific and particular job, the one I have now, into how I um, what I knew how to do and how I could apply for it. And um, and then I ended up with this whole other name. And if, if you follow my or job title, and so, you know, I um, my blog that I write every week, or not every week anymore, I used to be very good about every week, not once a month, a couple times a month. Um, but and I was called a librarian by any other name because, um, I am I'm a librarian and you might I might be called today I'm called a research evaluation analyst, I've been called an informationist, I've been called a health scholarly communications person, I've been called a consumer health librarian, reference librarian, you know, on and on and on. But the bottom line is I, I'm a librarian and that's what I say to um, anybody that I'm talking to when I'm talking about things like this, that it doesn't necessarily matter what's on my business card that um, the bottom line is these are the things that I know, these are the skills that I have from being a librarian, and they are applicable across the board to lots of uh, different areas. So <clears throat> I put these slides together on Monday, and uh, this is a wonderful quote from a book by Eleanor Roosevelt 
which I can't believe I left the um, the book reference off of this slide, <laughs> but uh, I read it over the summer. Um, it, Eleanor Roosevelt book wrote a weekly column, um, it's not a daily column, I know for sure it was weekly, it might have been a daily column even, in the New York papers when, when uh, she, after she was the first lady of the United States, and, and just tons and tons of wonderful wisdom, and this is from one of her last books that she wrote before she passed away, and I think it's, to me, it's like the greatest quote I've ever come across that um, encompasses everything that, that I think librarianship is all about. And it's just that life is interesting only as long as it's a process of growth. Or to put it another way, we only grow, we can gr grow only as long as we are interested. And um, being interested in other people and what they do, um, in our patrons and what they need, um, and what we like and what we want to do. To me, that's really the crux of our of our profession and what um, what we want to accomplish and and how we're very successful in what we do. And so that's what I put together. I left some time because I I hope you do have some questions or some ideas or. Okay, so Renee says I'm in my semester working in our e-portfolio. How can I incorporate that into a resume? Yeah, in terms of incorporating your e-portfolio into your resume, per se, like like literally incorporating what you have, um, technically I'm not sure how that works. But what what I would say is I keep an online um, I keep an online like scholarship professional page going, and I keep all kinds of things that I'm doing there, and. Um, I just kind of harvest those things, I think, over into any resume that I'm going to send out anywhere or if people are going to ask me to speak somewhere or anything like that. And that's kind of how I rely upon that. And I think I would do um, the same in terms of if I were, if I was in your position and finishing up school, I would kind of look at like all the things that I've collected over time, over my studies in my portfolio and really pull out those salient points and things that you can transfer over. And I see that Jill says to um, follow up with her offline because um, no doubt she has some great <laughs> ideas for that. But that's, um, I think that that would be really a, a great thing to do to just kind of pull that together. Yeah, I can say, did someone, I'll scroll up to Burn Kids. Out of my library career. Oh, so sweet chest question. The, you know, the, the difficult, most difficult and challenging aspect of my profession, uh, I would say, by far, is the um, the the stress of always. Um, it's a it's a bal it's a balancing act between always dealing with a lot of change. Um, it, it, the profession is just so immensely different today. Then when I came into it, even I think you know 12 years ago, I can't. And when I hear people who have been at this for you know 20, 30, 40 years, um, and they share their experiences, it's amazing to me the difference. Um, you, you know, all that they have seen happen. And so, I to me that's a huge challenge to to be able to to embrace it and be able to live within it. And some people are better at it than other people. Um, and I've been able to do it. I think I'm, I'm okay with it. But I think it is certainly a challenge that's there. And um, the difficulty in it is that that as you're always changing, you're constantly having to um, prove or reprove or reinvent or whatever your worth to people. And that's that's kind of hard. That, that can wear you down over time. I think depending upon where you are, um, you know, it's it's tough, I think, uh, depending upon your environment, how much value people just intrinsically place upon libraries. And some people place a lot, and some people not so much. And so you're always kind of trying to, re, you know, reprove, <laughs> for lack of a better word, that, that what you do is valuable and needed. And so I think that, that that's probably the the hardest thing that I've come across in my profession. Let's see, Jill. A good blog post. Okay, that's a good, good point. 
tell you about this. What's the most helpful? What were my most helpful for you in school? Um, oh, let me think back to library school. You know, I, I stumbled into a couple of classes that um, just happened to fit my schedule, and they were about, um, like, building online libraries and things like that, which was kind of new at the time. And I was like, I'm never going to do this. <laughs> but it didn't. It turned out that that was my very first job was to build an, an on, kind of an online resource for things. So it actually began, was a very helpful thing to do. So I guess the takeaway from that is to um, not necessarily uh, have such a, a rigid plan that I'm going to take the, you know, I'm going to always follow this path. Sometimes it might be you kind of need to take some course that you got, I got no idea where this is going to lead me or what I'm going to learn from it, but you actually learn a lot. I learned a ton of stuff about metadata and, you know, building catalogs and online catalogs and things, which I had no interest in doing but at the time, but they came back to be very beneficial to me um, in, in my work and um, I've actually continued to be because I do a lot of stuff in web design. I think the other thing, I took an information architecture class, which uh, I was like, I'm never going to build websites, but quite honestly, you know, the whole design uh, aspect of it, it is just great, and you do learn how to put a lot of things together. So I think that was probably great. I think the, um, the, the most beneficial thing in terms of um, hands-on, I can quantify that this led me to a job, <laughs> was uh, was my internship. And I did an internship at Maine Medical Center um, in Portland, Maine, and um, at the hospital there, where I had done an internship years earlier as an exercise physiologist. And um, it was, it was not, it was not my first choice, but I ended up there, and it led me onto this whole career of other things. Uh, I, I came across a wonderful mentor who eventually connected me to all kinds of medical librarians in New England, and now I have the job that I have today and had it for years. So um, I think that that's been, you know, it, it, networking is huge, and the people that you can meet and and uh, make those contacts and push off is great. Let me see. Do you have tips for students when they're evaluating their press jobs? Because they use how many they just hear what is going there. Oh, getting stuck at that point. Boy, you know, that's a great question. Um, I, I think it's really, um, for me, it's just kind of a brainstorming activity more than anything. Um, I sit down and I just think, gee, what did I ever do? Uh, you know, I had this one job in an office for for years, <laughs> you know, while I was working part time doing other things. And it was an accounts receivable clerk, you know, and I had to call people and tell them to pay their bills. And you're like, what in the world would that ever, have, what could that, how could I translate that to today? And um, it made me be organized. It gave me, um, it gave me, I don't know, whatever, the, the chutzpah or whatever the word is to, you know, pick up the phone and call people I didn't know, um, to have conversations with strangers, things like that. And, you know, we don't necessarily think that those are translatable skills, but they're enormously uh, translatable. Being able to talk to people that you don't know, being not afraid to pick up the phone and call somebody that you don't know. Um, Certainly, if you end up in public libraries, calling somebody and asking them for money might actually be a very good skill for you <laughs> to to have down the line. But um, you know, all all those kind of things, and I, and I do think it's I, I think it's easy to get stuck on that because we think so much about these defined competencies, and and you know we we're very specific about the skill set that that we think we should have, and we forget about this other stuff. Um, and yes, so yes, think, think broadly, exactly, and not, I think it's very much not trying to just say, I know how to do, I know how to answer a reference question. Yeah, but what is, what is all of that? It's all about interviewing, it's all about communication, it's all about taking notes, it's all about, um, you know, the back and forth and everything that comes from doing a 
reference question. And all of that, you then, you know, how do you then take that and do the next thing of how do you write a paper from doing a reference question or how do you um, do that? Uh, what do you do? I encourage all oh, the generalists or specialists. Um, that's a great debate. What do I encourage people to do? I've I've um I've waffled back and forth in my career. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll admit it. I think that um, when I first started working in medical libraries, I I was convinced that having a, a graduate background in that health science was was really a benefit to me, and it helped me specialize in those things. And I, I still think that to some degree. I certainly think that I took classes at a graduate level in things like statistics and research methods and stuff like that that, that was not associated with libraries that has paid, um, paid off well for me in being an evaluator in, in the role outside of libraries. Because I'm not sure exactly how your program is structured so much, but unless you have to do original research, and write a thesis and stuff. Um, that, that that doing that, going through that process is really important to understand how researchers work. And I didn't get that in library school, but I but I got in another program, and so that was really great, um, and it helped me a lot. That said, I have plenty, I have plenty, plenty of colleagues who um, just they're they're fantastic at. Um, Doing systematic reviews, regardless of what the subject is, they're they're amazing search you know search people, uh, regardless of what they're looking for. They just know the basic skills of how you search for things and how you phrase questions and all the syntax and all that sort of thing. And so it's a very general skill, but they can apply it across the board. So I think that that's kind of a wishy-washy answer. I don't um I, I don't have a I don't. I don't come down on the generalist or specialist thing, but but I will say the one thing that you, you need to have more than anything is an interest in what you're doing, and um, because if you're interested in it, and that's why I love that quote by Eleanor Roosevelt. If you're interested in it, you'll just be naturally inclined to learn about it. If you're interested in genetics, you'll learn about genetics, and that will make you um, a better librarian in that field. If you're interested about politics, you'll know politics. You'll learn about it. And you'll you'll be better than that, so that kind of thing. Um, let me see here. How do you navigate gaps in resumes? Oh, yeah, that's a good. I read something. I read something recently, and I don't uh, I don't know if I particularly agree with it. I haven't thought about it enough to have a strong opinion, but um, it was a thing about if you if you're older and going to fill them. I don't know where but he is in their career right now. But, um, you know, I had, I came to librarianship as my third career, so I did have some, I didn't have gaps in terms of work, but I had, you know, these on-ball things that didn't necessarily fit together um, to say I wanted to be a medical librarian. But um, someone mentioned something about uh, job and volunteer work. I I put that stuff there. I don't, and maybe, maybe you don't put dates so much. I'm not, I'm not sure, quite honestly, I haven't, I had to put a formal resume together in a while, so I, I don't know the, the best practices for for um, dates and things. But um, someone was was telling me to not put dates on anything. Like, don't put dates on your degrees. Don't put dates on when you did things because um, of issues about stages and or whatever. And I don't know. I, I I'm not sure that I have a great. <laughs> I don't have a solid opinion on that. Yeah, I'm not. Uh, I'm not sure that I agree one way or the other on it. Because on the one hand, a lot of experience is a good thing. On the other hand, yes, it can be held against you. Um, somebody goes, oh my gosh, you graduated from college 30 years ago. What have you been doing? And, and um, you know, kind of new to the field, that sort of thing. So I think that, um, I think Mr. Mason has to say, yeah, 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 yeah. So, see, joking up with that. Just good. But uh, that's what I would say with that, filling in those gaps. But again, I think I, what I really do think is where, and I know resumes are great for getting in the door, um, but I, but I would also say that in your interview is where you can really expand upon your what you can bring to a job, and that's where you should really focus. 
Any other questions? Oh. I could be rocking on the couch. I'm actually still in my office. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> I'm still in my office tonight, but I did take a little break. So I, I went out and had some people. Tech and teching. Tech is a great thing. Anything related, you know, tech is, how can you market your, just market your skills. Like, look at what's out there. Look at what, you know, look at what you want to do. Think of, like, what, what's your dream job? Once upon a time, I did an interview for a job, and it was kind of informal, so I could do this, but it was a great, it was a great exercise, I think. Um, I picked this, I did a top ten countdown of the ten people I would, I would want to be a personal librarian for. And I thought it was great because it made me stretch all these sorts of things. So if, maybe if you think about that in terms of what's your, what would, what would your ideal job be? Kind of like the very beginning when I say, what's your dream of a library? What's your dream of being a librarian? And um, so if you want to be an instructional, it, being an instructional librarian, if that's your dream job right now, like what, where would you want it to be and kind of, Look into all that research places, the best place that you can imagine doing, and just kind of fit your um, fit your skills to it, and kind of look at what do I know, and what um, what can I improve upon, what could I do better? You know, I think um, I, I throw something out for myself. So, my ideal job when I did that top ten. Everything. My ideal job was to would be to be a personal librarian for Terry Gross. If you know Terry, Terry, if you follow um, National Public Radio, and she does the the NPR show Fresh Air, and interviews like all those amazing people. <laughs> to me, that would be like the awesomest job ever, and just be her personal librarian. And um, well, if I think about that, I would think. What, what would I need to know to do that? And you know, every kind of news database, you need to know how to talk to people, you need to know how to connect people, you need to know how to reach out, and all that sort of thing, and just kind of build on that. And, um, I'm, uh, you know, truth be told, I'm probably never going to be Terry Gross's personal librarian, but I, um, I do a good job where I am now, and as will you, <laughs> wherever you are. Let's see. Give me the free resources. You know, research uh, institution, you've got sleeping, you pay no, no, nobody pays you to sleep. Sorry. Sorry, Felicia. There's none of that. Sure. <laughs> and unless, I guess, it, well, you could be in a sleep study. Sleep study, you could pay for that. And the university, yeah, yeah, yeah. The university would actually give you a, a great bit of opportunity to do all kinds of things. Kate left the room. That's the best job. There you go. Anything else? An aspiration. There you go. That might be about it. Okay. So that's great. Thank you, everyone. Um, my contact info is there. Folks have already left. You can get my contact info anyway. Yeah, the slides. You can post them. Um, really, I, I, um, I wholeheartedly say if you have any questions or or just want to reach out and, and uh, touch base, please do feel free anytime. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Thanks, Jill. Thanks, Felicia.